Well, we have the blue zones for areas of exceptional longevity around the world where there may be 10 times um, the rate of those reaching those triple digits, uh, actually named for a color that a demographer used in a kind of heat map of mortality around the globe. What lessons can we learn? That was Dr. Michael Greger, a world-renowned physician and author of How Not to Age. And How Not to Age, cookbook telling us about the blue zones and fascinating world of longevity diets, dietary patterns that may hold the key to a longer lifespan. Dr. Greger is a champion for evidence-based nutrition, focusing on how food choices can impact our longevity. Today, we're diving deep into the science of aging and unveiling the most promising dietary approaches for extending your healthy years. Ever wished you could turn back the clock and live a longer, healthier life? The answer might be on your plate. In this video, we'll be joining Dr. Greger to explore a variety of dietary patterns. Dr. Greger will dissect the research behind each approach, explaining how specific foods and nutrients may influence your risk of chronic diseases, cellular health, and overall lifespan. But there's no one-size-fits-all solution. Dr. Greger will help you navigate the different dietary options, considering factors like your preferences, health conditions, and lifestyle. Learn how to personalize your approach to longevity and create a sustainable, delicious eating plan that can benefit you for years to come. This video will equip you with the knowledge and tools to make informed dietary decisions that can potentially extend your lifespan and promote healthy aging. Let's listen to Dr. Greger initiate this journey by discussing more about the Blue Zones. Well, the Blue Zones organization distilled findings from more than 150 dietary surveys from the world's longest living people to create a set of 10 food guidelines. The foundation of the Blue Zones food guidelines is making your diet at least 95% plant-based, avoiding highly processed foods, emphasizing beans as the healthiest source of protein, water as the best beverage, and nuts as the healthiest snack. That's the foundation. The final five guidelines are go easy on fish, eliminate eggs slash sugar, reduce dairy, and retreat from meat, um, noting that Blue Zone centenarians only eat about two ounces of meat or less about five times a month. Historically, there have been five recognized Blue Zones, but only one survives and thrives to this day. The red, white, and blue zone, the seven-day Adventist, in Loma Linda, California, with perhaps the longest life expectancy of any formerly studied population in history. There are a number of shared Blue Zones lifestyle characteristics, family coherence, avoiding smoking, daily exercise, social engagement, but plant-based nutrition appears to be the principal component alone accounting for about half the difference in lifespan. No surprise since the number one risk factor for death in the United States is the American diet. Just how bad is the American diet, also known as the Western diet? So unsafe sex, bad. Sedentary lifestyle, bad. Alcohol and drugs, especially tobacco, bad. But cigarettes, only killing about a half million Americans every year, whereas our diet kills many more. We are what we eat, which is good news because it means we have the power. Changing from a more typical diet to a more optimized diet, starting at age 20, would be expected to increase the lifespan of women by about 11 years and men by 13 years. The largest life expectancy gain would be made by eating more legumes, beans, split peas, chickpeas, and longevity. So if there's one thing we could eat, legumes for longevity. Hummus for health. <laughs> then comes whole grains and nuts and eating less meat. Now, for the few of you who aren't 20 anymore, not to worry, Starting eating healthier at age 60 could still mean adding eight or nine years to your lifespan. Even starting as late as age 80 
could add years. Changing your health destiny can start tomorrow morning at breakfast. Wow, it's good to know it's never too late to fix our diet. Do we need to completely change our diet? And it doesn't take much. The NIH AARP study is the largest forward-looking study on diet and health in history based on its six million person years of observation, replacing just 3% of daily caloric intake from animal protein with plant protein was associated with a 10% decreased risk of overall mortality in both men and women. Just dropping, swapping 3% of all the animal protein sources, eggs were found to be the worst. Swapping in 3% of plant protein for egg protein was associated with twice the benefit, 20% lower mortality for you know, swapping in a few you know, British beans for breakfast instead. Harvard researchers found that when it comes to premature death process, meat was the worst, followed by eggs. In essence, they found that tuna salad may be better than egg salad or BLT, but a bean burrito beat out the bunch. When it came to death from all causes put together, Plant protein beat out every type of animal protein, including dairy, fish, and chicken. A 3% swap from chicken to chickpeas or fish to falafel was linked to a 6% decreased risk of premature death. What's the correlation between a healthy diet and longevity? But does eating healthy actually slow down aging? randomize hundreds of women to a diet centered around healthy plant foods, or exercise, or neither, and though the physical activity failed, those in the plant-based dietary intervention group had a significant slowing of biological aging. So diet can lengthen our life, but does it change anything else? Of course, it isn't just about adding years to your life, but life to your years. An unhealthy aging index was devised to measure functional impairments, vitality, mental health, physical health, substituting even just 1% <laughs> of calories from plant protein for animal protein appeared to lead to significant less deficit accumulation and substituting 5% may reduce the risk of dying from the greatest deficit, dementia. That may help explain why those who don't eat any meat at all may be up to three times less likely to become demented. But again, it's not all or nothing. Anything else? In fact, the worst thing about humanity's diet is neither animal nor vegetable, but mineral, sodium. Here are the top five fatal flaws of our diet. Millions of deaths may be attributed every year to not eating enough whole grains, not eating enough fruit, not enough nuts and seeds, not enough vegetables, but the single deadliest ingredient in humanity's diet is something we get too much of, and that's salt, our number one dietary risk factor for death. A recent whopping study, for example, more than a half million people found that those who salted their food at age 50 appeared to have about a two-year lower life expectancy compared to those that didn't. So, just swapping out the salt shaker for some salt-free seasonings or salt substitute could potentially add years to your life. How do we know it's cause and effect? What can we do about our addiction to salt? Five kitchens at a veteran's retirement home were randomized into two groups for a few years, offering meals salted either with regular salt or, unbeknownst to them, a 50-50 blend of regular salt sodium chloride with a salt substitute like these potassium chloride. The kind of salt was the only difference between the meals, and cardiovascular disease death rates plummeted by 40% in the folks getting the reduced sodium blend. The new difference in life expectancy between the two groups at age 70 was equivalent to that which would have occurred naturally in 14 years. Meaning simply switching to even just half potassium salt, which you wouldn't even be able to taste the difference of, appeared to effectively make people more than a decade younger when it came to the risk of premature death. Wow. So, sounds great. Anything else? 
What do the likes of the SALT Institute have to say about public rec health recommendations to reduce sodium intake? Well, in testimony before a congressional committee, the presumption that healthier diets would cut health care costs was challenged. Indeed, one processed food defender testified, health care expenditures increase if lifespan is prolonged. Right? I mean, if people eat healthier and live longer, it could be more expensive. Noting that if tobacco were banned, the increase in expected lifespan would increase the cost of care of old people. Think how expensive it would be if people started taking care of themselves and didn't conveniently die on time. Any other foods we shouldn't be eating? Ultra-processed foods, often packed with added salt, sugar, and fat, consistently account for more than 50% of our dietary caloric intake. More than half of our diet is junk. Not surprisingly, those foods are associated with significantly increased risk of dying prematurely. So just cutting back on animal foods isn't enough. Healthy plant-based diets are associated with significantly lower risk of dying, but unhealthy plant-based diets are not. In the Harvard cohorts, the more you minimize meat, eggs, and dairy, the lower your risk of death falls. But that's only if you're eating healthy plant foods. If you instead just pile on the junk like chips and soda, you can increase your risk of death overall, even if animal product consumption remains low. Same in the Million Veteran Program study. Healthy plant foods reduce their risk of death, but if your idea of a plant-based diet is fries and a Coke, you're not doing your body any favors. Same with the risk of cognitive impairment. Only healthy plant foods reduce risk. The same with dementia and depression. The same with frailty. Healthy plant foods, good. Plant-based junk, bad. What are healthy plant foods? That's why Cornell professor emeritus of biochemistry, T. Colin Campbell, coined the term whole food plant-based diet. And as a physician, right, terms like vegetarian, vegan, just tell me what you don't eat. I mean, do you actually eat vegetables, right? Professor Campbell's physician son and daughter-in-law tried putting a group of vegetarians and vegans on a whole food plant-based diet. In eight weeks, they lost 10 pounds, dropped their LDL cholesterol 15 points. In other words, vegans may benefit from eating a little more plant-based too. The current definition of plant-based stated in the study are these eight foods. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, herbs, and spices. Remember, your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.